Welcome to our live coverage of uh, the firing of U.S. Attorney Preet Bharara by President Trump. Uh, sorry for the bit of a delay in getting on the air right now. But we are here. Um, so we thought this was an important story. We wanted to give you some live breaking news coverage of it, give you an alternative to the mainstream media. So let's get into it. Um, so I'm going to summarize in a second uh, a little of the background of the story in case you haven't been following it or aren't aware of all of the specific details. But, um, but for now, the first thing I want to do is just read the tweet by Preet Bharara. So Preet Bharara was, until earlier today, the U.S. attorney, the chief prosecutor in the Southern District Court of New York. And he had been, President Trump had yesterday asked all 46 of the U.S. attorneys that were left from the Obama administration to resign. Uh, I believe there are 93 total. I might be off by one or two, but I believe there are 93 total, but a bunch of them had left already. We'll talk about that more in a moment. But there were 46 still remaining, and yesterday President Trump, Trump, President Trump asked all 46 uh, U.S. attorneys from, the, from 46 different districts to resign. The one who did not was Preet Bharara from the Southern District of New York. Uh, and he actually texted this morning, if, sorry, texted, tweeted this morning. I believe he tweeted about this this morning. Maybe he uh, actually, so I don't know if he did or last night. I don't know if he did. I thought he had tweeted last night saying he was not resigning. But anyways, the tweet he sent out earlier today was as follows. This is from Preet Bharara's Twitter account. And it says, I did not resign. Moments ago, I was fired. Being the U.S. attorney in SDNY will forever be the greatest honor of my professional life. So we had heard reports this morning, I had heard reports on the media, in the media, that Preet Bharara was not resigning like all of the other uh, U.S. attorneys uh, were who had been asked to resign yesterday by President Trump. And uh, we'll talk in a second about some reasons he might have done this uh, and if, what, what, uh, what's going on here. But uh, the, the, the key news for right, the key piece of news, new piece of news uh, today was that Preet Bharara, after refusing President Trump's request to resign, uh, was fired. And the details of this that were reported, uh, I know I saw Jake Tapper report this. I don't know who originally reported it. I saw a bunch of different people report this in the media. What happened, uh, the way this firing went down is that Dana Bonte, who's the acting assistant, sorry, acting deputy attorney general. So Jeff Sessions, the attorney general. Dana Bonte is the acting deputy attorney general. And Dana Bonte will be replaced eventually because uh, Dana Bonte is a holdover. Um, Dana Bonte called Preet Bharara earlier today and said, President Trump is requesting that you resign. And uh, so, uh, sorry, Pre President Trump is, uh, well, I'm not, I'm not requesting you resign. President Trump is firing you because President Trump yesterday requested that uh, all the remaining U.S. attorneys resign. Preet Bharara did not resign. So today, Dana Bonte, the uh, acting deputy, uh, Deputy Attorney General called Preet Bharara and said, President Trump is firing you. So that's how Preet Bharara got fired today. So let's talk for a little bit about, let's give a little backstory here about uh, what, uh, what Preet Bharara, who he was or who he is. He's not dead. He's just fired. Uh, who he is and uh, what his position was and how this came about and a little perspective here. But as we do this, uh, would also love to hear your comments about what's going on about this topic, about this breaking news story. Do you have any thoughts on this? Or if you have any questions about it, I'd be happy to try and answer them. If you'd like to write in while we're on the air this afternoon, you can, uh, the information's on your screen how to do that. You can either go to my Twitter feed, which is at Lookner, at L-O-O-K-N-E-R, and you can direct message me there, or you can email me at steve.lookner at rsbn.tv. I will get your comment or your question. I'm happy to read it on the air. I would love to. So let me know what you're thinking about this story. Um, actually, let me just check real quick. Once in a while, somebody sends in a comment uh, really early. So I just want to make sure I haven't ignored anyone by I go into a little, by go, before I go into a little of the background of this story. Looks like I'm all caught up. Okay, so, um, so let's talk a little bit about this whole story in a little bigger perspective. So Preet Bharara, until today, was the U.S. attorney in the Southern District Court of New York. Now, there are 
93 districts, the federal court system uh, is divided into 93 districts. There are 93 district courts spread throughout the country in different, different geographical areas. And the Southern District Court of New York, where Preet Bharara was the U.S. attorney, was is one of these courts. Uh, it has a bigger, it's seen as having a bigger importance, though, compared to a lot of the other district courts. It's sort of more prominent than them because, for example, so the Southern District Court covers Manhattan. So uh, if there are federal charges against a Wall Street firm, say, or a big bank, um, it will be brought in the New York, Southern District Court of New York because that's where their headquarters are. So Preet Bharara, in his capacity as chief prosecutor for the District Court of New York, Southern District Court of New York, uh, he would bring federal cases and has brought federal, federal cases against Wall Street firms, against banks like Bank of America and Countrywide. Um, so it's, there are uh, big, pub, well-publicized cases that happen in that district. Also, because it's New York, that gets a lot of publicity. So uh, Preet Bharara, for example, uh, uh, tried a case against um, the, it was, I believe it was the Speaker of the New York House, Sheldon Silver, if I'm getting the details right, and Sheldon Silver was actually arrested uh, and convicted of crimes, uh, at, at, and he was a very, very powerful figure in New York government. And so, and, uh, so, so between it being, between it covering New York and uh, covering Wall Street uh, and covering these banks that are located in New York, this position is a very prominent district court uh, attorney position. And uh, James Comey also earlier in his career and Rudy Giuliani both had this position that Preet, Bar Preet Bharara was fired from today. They were both in the past uh, the chief of U.S. attorney for the Southern District Court of New York. So, um, so just that's a little bit about the Southern District Court of New York. So it's one district among 93. And a little perspective here. It is traditional for when a new administration comes in to get basically get rid of all of the U.S. attorneys from the different districts, get rid of all of them, and to bring in all new ones. So, for example, when President Clinton in 1993 came into office, he in March, so in March of his first year, which is the same as President Trump, President Clinton asked all 93 uh, uh, U.S. attorneys to leave, and they did. So uh, they were all Republican nominated. So when a new president comes in, traditionally the new president will ask the existing U.S. attorneys to leave. A lot of them will leave anyway because they know this is going to happen. Uh, but it's 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 entirely precedented. Precedented. So what President Trump did in asking these attorneys to leave that was not unprecedented. That was perfectly keeping in tradition. Um, and President Trump asked 46. U.S. attorneys to leave, and you might say, well, why did he only ask 46 U.S. attorneys to leave? Those were, so my understanding is that a bunch of U.S. attorneys had already left their jobs when President Trump came into office because they knew this was going to happen anyway. And this is a common thing that happens too, is that U.S. attorneys will leave when they know a new president is coming in because they figure there's going to be turnover. So I wasn't sure exactly on the details. It was like if they, if they all left their jobs since President Trump came to office or did some leave their jobs before. But basically there were 46 justices left, sorry, 46 U.S. attorneys left who were from the Obama administration. I believe they were all Obama appointees. Um, and these 46 were the holdovers, and all 46 of them were asked to resign by President Trump. And actually, there's one, I believe there's one who wasn't. No, well, Dana Bonte was not because he's the executing, he's the acting deputy attorney general, but he will be, uh, he will be, uh, leaving soon anyway. So he was not asked. But the 46 Obama holdovers were asked to resign by President Trump. And again, as I said, this is entirely keeping with precedent. So it's not true that this is an unprecedented move by President Trump to fire all these attorneys. Also, you should know, in these, you might say, well, isn't it weird that presidents come in and they, they fire all these U.S. attorneys or they make them resign? Doesn't that just screw up all the cases that these U.S. attorneys were prosecuting? Remember, these U.S. attorneys are the chief prosecutors in, in each of their districts. Um, but, but actually, it doesn't totally mess up all of the, all of the existing, existing cases uh, that are being carried out by the diff different district courts because in addition to the uh, politically appointed U.S. attorneys, 
there are career attorneys in each of these districts. So while Preet Bharara, for example, is now fired and has to leave the Southern District of New York court, there are a bunch of career attorneys there. These are not people who are politically appoint appointed by the presidents. Uh, they are just there as, and they, they stay through the various presidents. So, for example, there was, uh, there was uh, an investigation, I believe, going on in the Southern District of New York Attorney's Office, an investigation of Bill de Blasio, Mayor Bill de Blasio of New York City. And this investigation is investigating whether Mayor, there was some pay to play stuff going on, whether Bill de Blasio took some money during his campaign in exchange for doing things as mayor. This investigating is going, investigation is going on. It was being led by Preet Bharara. That investigation will not stop just because Preet Bharara has gotten fired. The career attorneys who are in that office who will stay remaining uh, as uh, they were there when President Obama was there, but they're going to stay now that President Trump is there. They will carry, they've been working on this investigation, they will carry it on. So perhaps it hurts the investigations in the sense that somebody who is very prominently involved in them is not there, but the investigations that were ongoing do keep going because there are career attorneys in each of these districts and they're staying and they can carry on the investigations. Now, one difference I should point out that some people have pointed out in President Trump uh, asking the 46 U.S. attorneys to resign and past presidents doing something similar, like exam for example, Bill Clinton asking 93 U.S. attorneys to resign, is some people have said that President Trump had them leave faster. So reports have it that President Trump yesterday requested U.S. attorneys to be out of their office by the end of the day. They were supposed to resign and be out of their office by the end of the day. That is, I know, a contrast with President Clinton, who when, Janet, when his attorney general, Janet Reno, asked 93 U.S. attorneys to leave, uh, it was said that some, if they were working on a, specific, on a particular case that was going to be done in a few weeks, they could continue work on the, their case. I don't know the total specifics on all of that, like who left when, but justices were allowed uh, from the reports I read, sorry, justices, uh, attorneys were allowed from the reports I read, some of them, to not leave right away. They were allowed to finish whatever investigation they were working on uh, or cases they were working on and then leave. So that some people did comment uh, that I have read and seen on TV that this was a quicker, that, that President Trump's order for people to resign, for the U.S. attorneys to resign, was an order on which uh, they were supposed to leave much quicker by the end of the day than is the norm. We can talk about why that might have happened. But again, the overall action of the president coming in and asking the U.S. attorneys who were holdovers from the last administration to leave, that's something that commonly happens uh, and it's not unprecedented by any means. So um, now uh, I want to, so again, we are covering here, before we talk about this more, we are covering here this breaking news that U.S. Attorney Preet Bharara from the Southern uh, District uh, of New York, Southern District Court of New York, was fired today by President Trump after he refused to resign. President Trump yesterday asked 46 U.S. attorneys to resign. These were the remaining 46 Obama uh, attorneys who were appointed by Obama, and, um, or they were at least holdovers from the Obama administration. I believe they were all appointed by President Obama, however. And uh, President Trump asked them all to resign yesterday, but the one who didn't was Preet Bharara. He refused to resign. So today, President Trump uh, fired him. And that's the breaking news that came out today. And we're, gonna, we're giving some background a bit about, about this. We're going to talk a little more about this. Uh, but, and I want to talk about maybe uh, why President Trump gave this order uh, and why he gave it in the way he did. Uh, but before I do that, I want to see, if, uh, I think a couple of you have written in, so I want to get your comments. And part of what we do in our breaking, breaking news coverage here is we don't just talk at you. We like to have a dialogue with you. We want to know what you have to think. So if you have a comment or a question, I'd love to hear it. I'd love to read it on the air. Uh, write me. The information's at the bottom of your screen there. Uh, my, direct, my Twitter is at Lookner, at L-O-O-K-N-E-R, and you can direct message me there. Or you can email me at steve.lookner at rsbn.tv. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Bobby Ray wrote in, uh, 
Tweet for something 2018. He did this to get political points. So, all right, so this is an interesting uh, comment, Bobby. So, you, so remember, Preet Bharara was the only U.S. attorney that President Trump asked to resign yesterday that didn't actually resign, and he, he, didn't, he refused to resign, and President Trump had to fire him. And Bobby Ray thinks that Preet Bharara did this to get political points. So, as I mentioned before, that U.S. attorney's position from the Southern District of New York is uh, a prominent position, and in the past, people have gone on from that position to having powerful positions in government. So, for example, Rudy Giuliani was uh, the U.S. attorney for the Southern District of New York. And you think, Bobby Ray, that Preet Bharara didn't resign and made, him, made President Trump fire him to uh, get for, for his political benefit. Could be. If he was going to have to leave anyway, now a lot more people are talking about him and know who he is. Maybe he'll run for something. We'll see. So very interesting point, Bobby Ray. Thank you. Um, I am seeing here. Okay, I think I'm caught up there. Let me just go to email and make sure there's no other emails waiting for me. Okay, I want to talk now for a second about uh, why President Trump did this and did it in the way he did. So I don't think it's a surprise that President Trump, oh, well, there's certain background about Preet Bharara that I should give, and this is part of this story too. In November of last year, I believe it was on November 30th, so this is after President Trump won the election, Preet Bharara was called to meet with President Trump in Trump Tower. After the meeting, Preet Bharara gave some interviews in, in the lobby of Trump Tower about what the meeting was like. And Preet Bharara, you can actually go watch these comments online that Preet Bharara made. But what Preet Bharara said is that President Trump asked Preet Bharara in the meeting if Preet Bharara would be willing to stay on as U.S. attorney uh, after President Trump came into office. Uh, and President Preet Bharara said he would be willing to do so. Now, the exact wording Preet Bharara used is he said, President Trump asked me if I'd be willing to stay on. So when he was saying this, Preet Bharara didn't say, President Trump asked me to stay on. And I've seen this misreported a lot of places. If this reporting is just going on Preet Bharara's comments, because if you watch Preet Bharara's comments, what he says is, President Trump asked if I'd be willing to stay on, which is different than asking him to stay on. Then Preet Bharara said in his comments, uh, I think he said something like, I spoke to Attorney General Sessions, who also asked me to stay on. Which is confusing because, as Preet Bharara told it, President Trump didn't ask him to stay on in November. He asked if he'd be willing to stay on. Which might reasonably be seen as a sign that President Trump might actually ask him to stay on in the future, but it, it's two different things. So. Either, if Preet Bharara is right, either President Trump asked if he was willing to stay on or President Trump asked him to stay on in this meeting. Uh, but clearly, President Trump ultimately didn't want Preet Bharara to stay on because today, President Trump fired Preet Bharara all, and, and after asking all of the U.S. attorneys from the Obama administration to resign. And there's speculation I've seen in the mainstream media going on, which is, why did President Trump change his mind. Now, one thing I want to say about this is, again, it's not clear to me that President Trump himself asked Preet Bharara to stay on in this meeting, because after the meeting in the interview, Preet Bharara said, President Trump asked if I'd be willing to stay on, which could just mean President Trump said, hmm, if, if I do end up asking you to stay on, would you do it? That would also, also be a reasonable question for President Trump to ask, because President Trump might have, sorry, so President-elect Trump at the time might have been thinking, hmm, perhaps I'd want Preet Bharara to stay on, but before I ask him to stay on, I want to know if he'll do it. I don't want to, as president, ask him to stay on, and then he says no, and then it's embarrassing for me. So it's entirely reasonable that President Trump could last November have asked Preet Bharara, will you stay on if I ask you in the future? So. If that happened, if that's what happened, President Trump didn't change his mind. So the story shouldn't just be, why did President Trump change his mind? Because it's not clear to me that President Trump did change his mind. But let's suppose, for sake of argument, that President Trump either did say to Preet Bharara, will you stay on back in November, or had been planning on keeping Preet Bharara, which he very well might have been doing, but he didn't now. Why would that change? 
Well, one possibility that I had, uh, that, that, that has been talked about, and that seems possible to me, is that Preet Bharara has uh, connections to Chuck Schumer. So Preet Bharara used to be the counsel for Senator Chuck Schumer. And uh, as we've seen over the last month or so, Chuck Schumer has become one of the chief Democratic voices against President Trump. So Chuck Schumer, for example, is one of the chief Democrats out there talking about what's wrong with this uh, health bill and also was out there complaining and saying, uh, I believe he said that J Attorney General Sessions should resign. So. Chuck Schumer has made himself a figurehead in the anti-Trump movement in Congress. Uh, so for all you know, for all you know, President Trump did not want someone this close to Chuck Schumer to be a U.S. attorney. Now, this might not be the reason at all. I'm just speculating here, but that's one possibility. Um, and uh, as to other possibilities, you know, it, it might have just, so another possibility that I've seen discussed, and this is possible, is that President Trump has been concerned, because we've heard concern from his administration, uh, that there is, there are, and President Trump has ex expressed his concern, that there are people from the Obama administration still in positions in government who are working against President Trump's administration. And there have been, clearly have been leaks about President Trump, uh, uh, sorry, leaks harmful to President Trump's administration coming from inside the intelligence community in the Department of Justice, for example. Um, and we don't know who's leaking, but President Trump's administration is assuming, with I think, with, with, I think reason to do so, that the people leaking this stuff are opposed to President Trump. And we've heard more, we've heard talk about this deep state a bunch of Republicans are talking about how there's a deep state, uh, which is people who are in the government and are against President Trump and trying to undermine President Trump's administration. So it's possible, it is possible that President Trump, you know, in the last couple of days just thought, you know what, I got to start making uh, an effort to really get out people from the previous administration from the current government. And he said, you know, look, we haven't removed, there are a bunch of these U.S. attorneys who haven't left yet. And traditionally, the pre U.S. attorneys from the previous administration are, are, are resign anyway. So I'm just going to get rid of the ones who are there now, and I'm going to get rid of them fast. I don't want them to stay around for a few more weeks. It's time to get rid of these people. So that might have been a reason that President Trump yesterday said, hey, 46 U.S. attorneys resign and be out of your office by the end of the day rather than you're free to stay on for a few weeks. So that's a possibility too. I don't know, I'm just laying out these possibilities. So uh, who knows? I don't know, but I'm just speculating here. Anyways, this is the story right now. And uh, sorry, I'm just checking my feed here. Excuse me one second while I pull my email up here. I just wanna make sure that I've gotten everything here. And I want to check my Twitter real quick. Okay, so where we're at now is uh, Preet Bharara, Preet Bharara, the U.S. attorney for the Southern District of New York, has been fired by President Trump. Uh, he was fired after he was asked to resign along with all the other U.S. attorneys yesterday. And he, he was the one who refused to resign. But today he was asked, to, he, was, he was fired by President Trump. He was called by Dana Bonte, who's the assistant uh, I was the deputy attorney general and told that President Trump is firing you today. So he's been fired. Uh, let's see here. Uh, we're going to be on for just a few more minutes here. If you'd like to send in a comment, your feedback on this story, or a question, would love to hear it. You can do so by writing me at, at, on Twitter at Lookner at L-O-O-K-N-E-R. Feel free to follow me there if you'd like. Uh, or you can email me at steve.lookner at rsbn.tv. Uh, another brief update I want to give you is that there was, if you haven't read about it, uh, an intruder who scaled the fence of the White House last night and got up kind of close to the White House before he was stopped. Uh, and uh, they, from what I read, they checked him and he didn't have any weapons on him. But obviously that's a troubling, uh, troubling occurrence that he wasn't stopped. And also... Uh, 
uh, from what I had read, he had said he was a friend of the president, and the, I think he said the president was expecting me or I have an appointment or something, which is clearly not true. And uh, President Trump today actually said in, in public comments on camera that the Secret Service did a great job, actually, and he thought the Secret Service did a great job, and also that uh, this person was troubled. So that's what we heard from President Trump on that. Uh, so uh, we are, we came, I, so I just want to say one more thing to add to the list of things that I want to remind everyone out there that we are covering President Trump's rally next week in Nashville. So on Wednesday, he's going to be doing a rally, talk about talking about the health care bill. This is going to be in Nashville, Tennessee at 6.30 p.m. Central Time, 7.30 p.m. Eastern. We, that's when the rally starts. We will be there right side with our camera bringing you the live feed of the rally, but we'll also, a couple hours before, be interviewing people who are there, uh, interviewing people in line, interviewing the crowd, uh, showing you the sights of, of, of the rally, getting, uh, getting, uh, talking to the crowd like, like no, the rest of the media doesn't do. And we'll be doing that as in the pre-show, and we'll be doing a post-show, too. And our post-shows are lively, as I think, if you've seen them before, you know, they get a pretty lively, we get a pretty lively crowd out there for our post-shows, and we interview the audience, and it's really fun. So uh, we hope you join us for that. We will tweet out more about that uh, as it's getting closer. Uh, to follow our Twitter, it's at RSB Network. That's at RSB Network. And if you enjoy this kind of programming. So if you enjoy when we go to the rallies and cover it, and you enjoy this kind of breaking news co coverage, we love to do it, but obviously it costs money, and uh, we don't want to take money from big donors who are going to control what we say and make it so that we can't be independent anymore. We want to do the kind of programming you like. So if you'd like to donate to us, your donations really keep us in business and on the air and allow us to be able to cover stuff. Uh, you can go to rsbn.tv slash donate. That's rsbn.tv slash donate. Or you can, if you're watching this live, there's a chat room next to the video, you can just go to the dollar sign at the bottom of the chat room and click on it. And if you click on that dollar sign, it gives you a way to donate. Uh, even small donations, we really appreciate. So uh, everybody who's donated in the past, also thank you. You have kept us here in business, uh, being able to cover this stuff. And we love to do that and bring this coverage to you. So thank you. And thank you to the moderators, again, uh, as usual today, for moderating the chat. Okay, I'm going to do a quick check here just to make sure there aren't any more comments here. Um, let's see. I think we might be good, and if we're good, I might sign off at least for the moment. Okay, so looks like we're all caught up on comments. So this has been our breaking news coverage of the firing of U.S. Attorney Preet Bharara uh, by President Trump. And we hope you've enjoyed the coverage. Want to come in today? and uh, give you some live coverage. If there are more events this weekend, we will also be covering it live. We are, if, you, if breaking news happens, tune to us at Right Side Broadcasting. If you want to, subscribe to us on YouTube and click that notifications bell so you get all, uh, you, you will get the uh, notification whenever we go on the air with a video. Uh, so if there's more breaking news this weekend, we'll be back covering it live for you. And on Monday, uh, if, if there is a Sean Spicer briefing, any day there's a Sean Spicer White House briefing, we bring those live to you. If you've missed any of them, go back and watch them. We have them all posted on Right Side Broadcasting at YouTube. Anyway, I am Steve Luckner. If you want to follow me, I'm at Luckner at L-O-O-K-N-E-R on Twitter. Uh, I thank you for joining us here today at Right Side Broadcasting for this breaking news coverage. Uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of the day and your weekend, and I'll either see you sometime later this weekend for breaking news coverage, or we will see you on Monday, but either way, we will see you soon. Have a great day.